The Oregon coast is home to some of the most spectacular beauty in the world. Rich forests of deep green, white wisping brushstrokes across skies of deep blue, ocean waves where the blues are even more intense. The brilliance of the ocean sunsets are of incomparable majesty. And that spectrum of color is all captured within the glass-blowing gallery of Ocean Beaches Glass. To blow a vase, artist and glass blower Bob Meyer starts by selecting the colors that will become the finished piece. Hue is added to the blowing process by means of adding colored pieces of crushed glass called frit to clear glass that he gathers from the furnace. This clear glass is picked up or gathered at the end of a hollow pipe at a temperature of 20 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. And that orange look to the glass is just because of the heat in it. It's not because of any color at this point. Now, Bob collects the first of the colors he'll use in the vase he's making. The next step is to start fusing all the glasses together in another device called the glory hole. Now, unlike the electric furnace, the glory hole is heated by natural gas, but it also holds a working temperature of between 22 and 2300 degrees. So this table here is called the Marver. This is where I start flattening it out. It's at this point that Bob blows the first little puff of air down the hollow stainless pipe. As the air hits the hot glass, it expands and begins to cause the glass to swell around it. Then it's back to the glory hole to once again bring the glass up to its working temperature. And over here at the bench, I'll shape it with one of the blocks. So now I have to let this cool down to about 11 or 1200 degrees so that it's stiff enough to support the weight and the heat of the next layer of glass. And you can actually see a little pink coming in at this point, and quite a bit of pink for some reason on the bottom. More clear glass is added, which covers the colored glass, giving depth to the piece, as well as adding more material, making the vase larger. A complementary color is added, and it too is raised to the molten working temperature. So now it's about ready to start blowing. So I'll use a puff of air or two again. After a bit more heat and another puff or two of air, Bob hangs the glass, allowing gravity to begin forming it into its basic vase shape. After the molten glass stops dropping on its own, a little swinging furthers the stretching process. Now it's time to begin working the top of the vase. For that step, the piece must be separated from the pipe. This is performed by gathering a small amount of molten clear glass on the end of a solid metal pipe called a punty. And then that glass fuses right to the bottom of the vase. And of course that's fresh out of the furnace, so it's pretty flexible, so I have to let that cool and stiffen a little bit. While it's doing that, I'm going to put some cold water right on this neck of the piece. 
And since the glass is close to a thousand degrees, that's, that cold water is going to start some cracking. Heating the top end of the vase renders it pliable enough to begin shaping the rim. One more trip to the glory hole to soften the neck, then Bob swings the vase again to elongate it with centrifugal force. And the finished art presents itself. To release the vase from the punty, a few drops of cold water promotes the surgical cracking. The finished vase is then placed into an annealing kiln at 920 degrees to cool it slowly overnight, which strengthens the glass and prevents any cracking that would result from cooling it too quickly. Each piece that you'll find at Ocean Beach's glass is a one-of-a-kind work of art. Feel free to take something home with you to help remember your visit to Ocean Beach's glass.